Here we've got her tape on her camera, which I tease her about. <laughs> and uh, well, what's on your mind here, at Hagar or James? It's your, it's your workshop. I have no midterm critique yet. Oh, you don't. You know, you're like the only one. Isn't that terrible? Not quite. <laughs> no. There's, Let's do it now. There's three left to go. Let's do it you right now. So what else do you have on your mind? Nothing. Just finishing up the YouTube stuff for you. Yeah. particular questions or anything, right? No, not yet. I will probably next week when I start because that um, thousand picture thing is almost complete for the data for the spreadsheet. But nothing right now. Okay. Nothing right now. Kira, how about you? What's on your mind? I'm still thinking about my semester project. I I think you said you weren't sure what I was going to use for tiddlers for that. Yeah. yeah. Was... So, oh, your semester. I love your semester project. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yours is the 9-11 stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I've been like a fan of, um, not a fan, but I've been, I studied 9-11 stuff since 9-11. Um, yeah. And it's, it's just, it's fascinating. Um, one of the things that I discovered today, and you're seeing my screen now, right? Are you guys seeing Christy YouTube too? Yes. Yep. You're probably figuring out what does that have to do with 9-11? Um, I'll share this around, but you probably know this already, but James, you do. You know, here's the start stop code for a YouTube video that works in Piddly Wiki. The trick is you have to say version equals three. In the I, you have to get the ver version three player. Um, and so what that does, though, is any random YouTube video you can play. And I think I'm playing it for 10 seconds now. My pleasure to introduce to you. That's it. I, I think I said it for like five seconds. It's just some random number. So that's so what that's useful for, Kira, it's for you. If you have audio or video content. Yeah, I needed that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can begin to tag it, and then uh, this was this came out of a, um, a project with a grad student who's doing a. Um, I'll share this with you too. Um, <coughs> anyone at SUNY IT with the link can view. Okay, I'll have to share this out more with the class too, but I'll share it with Kira in the meantime. Um, so she's doing something not in Tiddly Wiki whatsoever, but in the little spreadsheet, I built her a code generator. Okay, so you put the ID in here and your start time and your stop time, and it generates the iframe by just doing a concatenate, if you've seen the code up there. Um, and I saw in a couple people's midterms, they wrote about how it was kind of interesting. I think maybe it was actually in James or somebody else. It was interesting to think about building tiddlers in a spreadsheet. And so although this isn't really meant to build a tiddler, I think this would help you too, Kira. Uh -huh. Right, so if you just had any pieces of audio, um, you, you just generate the links in here. So you don't, um, and you could easily make this into a macro. And that's what I'm about to do too, right? You know how to make this, in, you can make this into a macro in YouTube, in um, Tiddly Wiki. I don't so, think you um, any macros yet. You've not written a macro yet? Uh, not, not really, no. Okay. Um, macros are, are, um, macros and templates, I think, are the empowering steps of Tiddly Wiki, because that's when you get to do something once and have it magnify its impact, like the structure. You get to impose that structure or spread that structure around to multiple pieces of content. Um, and so when you're tagging and transcluding, you're moving text around. When you're writing macros and using templates, you're, you're, you're not working with content, but you're working with, with sort of pure structure that determines how the content will be displayed. Um, and when you put them both together, you have pretty, a pretty powerful thing. And what's kind of interesting in this experiment is that we're blending the two, structure, the way that you write structure and the way that you manage content in a, in a way that's, I think, distinctive from other pieces of software. So, um, but yeah, I think you'll, you'll get to macros and you'll get to templates. Um, like the, have you seen the Tagly macro? Uh, kind of. I don't really know what it is. Okay, it's this. Let's see where if I can. I 
guess I haven't put it in these. Um, it's, you're you're going to laugh when you see it because I think the other day you took was it. Was it you or someone else who said that you're writing, you're starting to type code? Was that you who wrote that or was that someone else? Oh, I saw yeah. that as well. Yeah, that was fun. That you're actually, was it you, Kira, who said you actually knew the code you were typing it? Well, I, I did say that, yeah. And then I forgot it and I just learned it again. Yeah, that was with list links, wasn't it? List links, yeah. right? So yeah. this, this is what Tagly does. Are you seeing that, Kira? Uh, no. Can you ask if I am seeing it or if I've seen it before? No, you're seeing it now. I'm seeing it now, yes. Yeah, so all it actually does is puts that code that you know in your head. Uh-huh. And it defines, so it says slash backslash define tagly with no parameters, the code that you know, and then backslash end. And now anytime you type tagly inside of angle brackets, it will execute that code. This That's nice. And that you can do, and you don't have to put a mac, uh, each macro in a, so you can put those macros pretty much anywhere inside of Tiddlers or something. It's kind of, you kind of want to keep track of them at some level, so it's good to tag them and stuff. But yeah, and then, so once, you, once you've once you learned how to do something, especially if it's, if it's, if it doesn't have any Tiddler names in it, in a sense, right? So you're all, you're calling fields or you're calling tags, then you can just, use that code over and over again. So I just got tired of typing that, so I write tag. Um, and then when I go to use it, it's not there, I have to drag the Mac, you know, the tagly over to, to my other, to whatever wiki I'm working in, so. Um, anyway, so um, did you have other questions too? I just wanted to kind of have a sense of where we might go. We're gonna do a critique of James's uh, midterm talk about it a little bit and did you have specific questions that you wanted to address? Yeah, I'd like to know how you make uh, more than one tagly or different taglies. Say that again? How do you make uh, more than one tagly that do different things? Like m multiple macros? Yeah. Oh. Um, I see you've got a toggly as well now, Steve. Tog do I have toggly? Yeah, I saw that somewhere. Oh, there's Toggly. I wonder what Toggly does. <laughs> I must have used. What does it? What does it do? It um. As far as I can understand, it makes a um, a horizontal list. It. Uh, comma it separated like, list. Yeah, I must have been playing with it for some reason. I don't think I ever. I think it makes a. I don't know what it does. Maybe it's a. I have actually implemented it myself now. Actually, based on your idea, it was really cool. With Toggly, what what was it? It's funny. I don't remember what it does. I'll have to see. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what it does. I don't know. I'll have to play with it. It's funny. It's like you write these things a long time ago, and I have no idea what I was trying to do at that point. Yes, indeed. Documentation is the yes. key word. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so. So here, um, I just put Mac, I usually put the macros that I write. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not really good at keeping track of them. Um, and so there's a, I tag them. Um, and so if you tag them with design right, you know, with Kira's macros, then you'll always be able to find them again. But here's an example, here's my yeah. collection of YouTube macros. So there's a bunch of them in a single tiddler. that finds YouTube link, YouTube embed, YouTube trends include. Um, and then, so you can just write them. Um, in the new, um, and, and in the new rich text edit toolbar that we were playing with, um, uh -huh. the last, there's a, um, there's a tool on here that, that kind of, I don't know, it, it, it does a little bit of stuff. What does it do? It, um, Excision tool. Yeah, I can't remember what it, it's, it does something with, something with that was the, the oh. excise tool that you can uh, c c create a link or create a transclusion or you can even create a macro from there. 
Yeah, you can create how do you can create a macro from I can't remember. There was some way that it gives you the define code, which is kind of it was it was okay, but um, but um, so I'll, I'll we should work on building macros. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll write that into the. I'll make sure that we cover that in the in the um, templating exercise because I think they go together. Um, so that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, but it's pre they're pretty straightforward, and I, you can just keep them all in one tiddler if you want for your own stuff. Um, and then, of course, they're portable because you can move them around. Um, so certainly, you want to play with that. That they're they're pretty powerful. Yeah, they look great. Yeah. Okay. And um, so let me get back to James's. Uh, Yeah, I was expecting I was going to have a few minutes to get set up, and um, I didn't. Jump right in. Okay. So we're looking for the um, link to James midterm, and um, you definitely have to check out. Um, Hagar's midterm because it's pretty crazy stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yes, I've read this. I love James. I, I just I couldn't begin to think about how to critique it, so I've just I've gone through it. It's like oh, I just got to work on that for a little while. So I saw it too already. It's great. Yeah, and what I like that you did here, James, is that you you're, you're, you're you are you decided, and what I like, and I think Adrian maybe wrote it in her response to the critique today. That she says, oh, I'm get it's just, I get it, like building, it's just, it's a creative process. It's the all, there's no right way, wrong way. It's just a, it's like a surface on which we can write, but, and it's a set of tools that you've just not had before when you write and when you create. You've had Dreaming, you've had, you know, Microsoft Word, you've had all sorts of tools, but not quite that let you express yourself this way, I think. It's a little hard to figure out stuff, but. What I'm hoping people do in the current exercise is go with that freedom and just experiment and figure out a way to document their experiments. And why I say this in reference to James's midterm is because he's starting to play and he says, oh, I can make text dance on this screen because I can engage my audience and make things show up, okay? And it's, it's not about, it's, it's, what I want you to capture in your experiments is when you have this idea oh, I want to have check boxes and then I want the text to show up. I want you to say, this is what I want it to look like and this is how I made it work. Um, so James probably used the check box. There it is, the check box facility, you know? And um, there's this code and that's, that's interesting use of, and then the next piece that he has to recognize is that, oh, that's transclusion because I've got text hidden away somewhere that I'm going to make appear we call that transclusion. Um, so I like this too. And then it gets, uh, you can't see the links unless you get the answer right. I think that's kind of the humorous aspect of it. <laughs> yes. If you don't get it wrong, hey, you're done. <laughs> I like that. Um, so that's, that's pretty fun. Um, and then when we got to um, is, this is funny, right? So these are, I, this is sometimes you call this an Easter egg, right? You know, it's just like a little hidden piece of, it's like a little joke. And if you, you're only gonna get it if you happen to navigate to the physics. So um, people do this in games and um, there's little Easter eggs in games. It's not often you find it in, in midterms, but I like it, <laughs> you know? So it's, um, but what James is showing us here is, is there's a, there's a um, playful side to Tiddlywiki that he might, you might be able to touch and so maybe it would be kind of fun to write this as a game so you know write a game if you wanted to write a, a simple game like a, um, a choose your own adventure um mad libs you know the the things you did when you were in the mad libs you know when if you've got a story with a blank and you write a noun you write a verb and, you know and, and then you read it back to you. so you can do that in tiddly week those are kind of fun plays ways to play with text um, and so let me look at his projects um, and the ones he's completed. And there was something else I wanted to talk about here. Um, oh, yes, this was. Um, and so this is key, okay? 
the projects are, are important to me, but it's, it's important to to see that people are working towards something. And so, so if you're working on something that captures your attention, um, If you're working on something that captures your attention, takes your time and says, oh, I didn't get to do that project, that's fine. You know, make sure, let me know that that's what you're doing. You're gonna work on this over here instead because of these reasons, and then that's fine. So I'm perfectly happy with people, you know, creating their own path. When you come to a roadblock and say, and I say, oh, well, you need to know how to do this. If you go back and do this exercise that teaches you that skill, then, you, then you'll figure it out, you know, and that's fine. Um, and so there's something that he's doing here here um yeah no james you you can remind you can help me there's a place that you did a lot of um um you did some filtering that i wanted to find no what did you do um maybe it's a there we okay um so I thought James' commentary on tag crazy is interesting. Okay, um, tags are tags are, are I think tags are a uh, they're an acquired taste, um, and figuring out how to make tags work for yourself as a writer and how to make tags work for yourself for your readers are two very different things. Um, I think in, in, in Hagar's midterm, if you, if you take a look at that, you begin to see some really interesting work when he begins to tag things as in progress. Um, he's using tags to help his own tool, to help himself as a writer. So he's beginning to use hypertextual contexts and tools and hypertext techniques, tagging, not to facilitate reader reading of his manuscript, but the actual writing process. Um, and that's a that's a, a, a step that I think most of the time when you take that step when you begin to use Microsoft Word to help you write like when I started to use outline mode as a writer it wasn't for my readers but it was for me as a writing tool um, and I, I teach that in class sometimes and you know when you when you begin to use the tools to help you construct your world around you to construct your writing um, that's a, that's very different than you might have. Than where you were starting with Tiddly Wiki a couple weeks ago. So now, you know, as we move forward into these projects, I want you to think about it as a writer. Um, Hagar uses tags, the tag that was in progress, stuff like that. Um, um, Don, you could imagine if you if you wanted to move your text through different processes: first draft, second draft, um, copy edited, publish. Mm. You know, you might use tags for that. You might think of yourself as an authoring enterprise even if it's just you you still have different tasks you still have to copy edit your own work or perhaps you have a collaborator who's responsible for copy editing you know tags would help for organizing your material it's not just for publishing okay so so when you get so you, you want to both think about your reader and what tools are you building for your readers what do you think your reader is going to do when you get there but you also might want to begin to think about yourself as a writer you know, and what tools could I help? What what tools could help me um, with my writing? Um, so, um, yeah, James, your your next step is to um, uh, let me go back to home and just revise this. Okay, yeah. So, so your midterm works. Um, I think as you, one of the things that I would say is that there was not. Um, you're kind of talking about what you're doing, but when we get to the what I'm learning, um, I'd like, you know, I'd like to see more thinking. And it's, I'm not going to say you should go back to it, but as you get towards for the second half of the class, take this, take your your insight here about tagging, and then have a similar or more new, you know, broader insight also about linking and about transclusion and about templates. So as we think about all these techniques, try to develop some insights about how these exercises help you understand these different techniques. So there, I've talked you through your I'm not gonna write it. Perfect. <laughs> but what you can do is take the YouTube video and tag it, take the little clips, 
like little 10 second blurbs. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't do video. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, okay. Um, so there's, there's the, I hope that helps you. Um, and Hagar, did you have some questions or ideas or things that you're working on that you wanted to chat about? Um, oh, I haven't really, another voice. Yeah, I haven't really formulated much okay. um, as yet because I've been uh, kind of delayed a bit, but yeah. um, I'm no, starting to get back into it now. Yeah, I just didn't. Yeah, I just you know, if you had, if you brought an agenda and some ideas and stuff, then I thought we didn't. not particularly no. But I am, I am interested to see what other people are doing with their, okay, their semester projects as well. So let me um. Let me line up a couple of places to visit because um, I did want to get to um, a couple of, couple of different things and then we'll walk through um, I don't like that one. Actually, yeah, you wanted to talk about the guided development as well, and I yeah. had something to contribute on that as well. Okay, good. Um, so let me take this to home, close James's midterm, and I want to bring up the line up here is project critique. There we go. Okay. Um, so on the guided development, did you have a, a, an idea question there? Or? Yeah, I had an idea there. Um, I don't know whether you saw it, but I posted a comment on last week's conversation video mm -hmm. um, where you were talking about using the excise tool, which I know is relevant to the guided development this week. Um, and you were talking about basically turning it into versioning? Yes. Yeah, I had an idea where you can actually use that as it is at the moment. Okay, cool. Yeah, how would yeah. that Yeah, if you think about it, so you've selected your text ready for excising. So let me, let me bring up a text. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring up, um, I'm going to go to the actual exercise where I've got some tools to play with. So I'm going to bring up my um, Wikipedia article. Um, let's see, it's going to be in one of these experiments when we do the okay. reactor. Okay, back to 9-11 again, isn't it? No, it's actually, it's a, the, it's a Wikipedia article on refactoring that I use. Oh, right. Okay. So I'm just going to, uh, and I hope everybody, I just assume that everybody would seen clone before. Clone is one of those powerful tools. You take a tiddler, you clone it, now you have a copy of it with a number after it. So um, we're going to call this um, Hagar's um, Excision Experiment. Okay, now go ahead. Now. Yeah, okay. So select the text that you want to excise. Okay, so the way that the excise tool works is you select text that you want to excise or cut away from or put somewhere else, basically put in another tiddler. Okay, it's selected. Yep. Okay, now as you've got it selected anyway, let's copy it. Yep, exactly. Yep, copy. Uh huh. Okay, so you've copied it to your clipboard. Yep. Now perform your excise. Uh huh. And create a link rather than a transclusion. Okay to a tiddler titled? Okay, whatever you want to title it. Okay. Um, called Hagart's Excise Experimental Tiddler. Okay, and perform it, yeah. Okay, now once you can see that link, the yep. square brackets, yep. to the left of the opening square brackets, uh -huh. okay, paste your text back into your document from your clipboard. Yep. So we haven't actually excised it, we've just created a link. Which, which gives you a copy yes. or a version of your original text. Now you can go ahead and edit the text that you've just pasted back in and make a new version of it, but you've still got the original mm -hmm. and it's linked to it. It's not linked to it. Um, well, 
the excise tool should have created a link, yes? Yeah, so, so, the, so we're moving to a new tiddler which contains the text. Okay, so it's got it, it's, so you know what it is, but you don't know, and you've got a link to the original article. Oh, I made a mistake because I failed to save the um, tiddler that I Oh, had. yes, indeed, save it first, that's right. Yeah, you have to save the, if you, have, if I, uh, you have to save the tiddler to get it to tag correctly. So you have to be excising from a saved tiddler at the moment. Um, let me, that, you know what, I think that's very close. Um, well, what it, there's something. Yeah, I was doing something similar, um, which I demo in one of the other experiments where I highlight the text to be excised, I copy to my clipboard, I excise the selected text, and I paste it as the title of the new tiddler. And then I transclude it. And so what that does is um, build a tiddler that has both the title and the text in it, which you can then play with. Um, mm -hmm, yeah. And that's a different kind of object that has certain qualities and it's got your original text in two places. So um, these are important tools for writers, I think. And so mm -hmm. what I like about Jeremy's excision tool that he's created and what I'm trying to capture in this exercise is the creativity or the ideas that come to mind when you're given a tool to use. It's, you know, so think of, of a, of being a, a carpenter who's handled, who, who's, who's um, handed a saw, uh, a, 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 an electric saw for the first time. Um, a, a friend of mine told me about something he's very excited about because it's a new saw that, that um, makes it very easy to cut long straight lines, very light. And all of a sudden he's thinking of new ways to do work because he's been handed a new tool and it changes the way he works. And I want to do the same thing in this, in this exercise to change the way that we write. Um, mm. And so that's what's kind of intriguing. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I would I would love to see more ideas on that substitution and capturing. So that's a that's a tough one to come to. Um, mm. Come back to that. Let me share some of the work here that I've been playing with on this tag. Um, and so tag t a g g tag dot dot com um, tag. Um, this was my first venture into tiddly spot. It's kind of I haven't decided if I'd like it yet or not, um, but my goal is to replace the standard tag that you're very familiar with, which is just this tag pill, to have the tag pill with the first, previous, next, and last button associated with it. Where the mm. first, previous, next, and last will, ref or will take you to the next tiddler or the previous tiddler in that tiddler's list or in the list of tiddlers sorted by a defined field. Um, and so then whenever you show it, whenever a tag shows up anywhere in your wiki, it'll always have these buttons around it, first, previous, next, last. And, and what it does is instead of giving you a list of all tiddlers that are tagged with it, including the current one, it takes this current tiddler and puts it in context of the list. So if we look at this one, this is the tiddler called tag. That's not a good example. Let's look at testing tag. Um, testing tag, I see that. Tag is, so test, what, what you're seeing here is sort of a, um, a beginning idea. Testing tag is tagged with three different tags, a third tag, another tag, and tag. And now you can navigate to any of those uh, on the list. And this is this is, uh, and you've and you've moved your tags with the view template up to the top of the. I mean, yeah, so I'm moving a view tag. template or page template. Yeah, um, view template. Yeah, yeah, I'm and you've moved them up to the top of the tiddler. Yes, just to, for some reason, um, so I could get it to work. I think, um, but this is this is based on the on on uh, one of Hagart's early ones, the mul this is the multi-sequential narrative, basically. Um, mm -hmm. So this is an implementation of a multi-sequential narrative. And so that's interesting to work on and play with and imagine how that would work. I mean, I, you know, there's graphical work to be done. I think I stole your icons, Hagard. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's okay. Not a problem. Yeah. 
I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, you know, so that's, that's work that, um, you can follow and play with and use, um, and try and figure out how it would change again. If this is how tiddly making works, that changes what tagging means. You know, all of a sudden tagging is not just tagging is different because now it will be interesting also to see if we can get those icons inside the tag pill rather than outside. Yes, I guess so. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably you can fake it by making the, the, um, you, you put it in a table. It's, a, it's, I'll send that to the graphics department. If anybody wants to do that, <laughs> anybody in the class who wants to do graphics and finds that more challenging, there's a challenge for you. Um, it's all written in CSS and all that stuff. So yes, it's definitely doable. And, you would probably make it into a table with separate cells and fake it by squaring the cells and background colors so you couldn't see the table. But it would look mm -hmm. like we're all in the same hill. Um, so, but that's to me somewhat, I don't know, that's there. Um, and what I have done for the, let me jump over to the Kira's thing, because Kira's is very interesting. Here, you're still there, I think, right? Yep, I'm still here. So, do you want to describe sort of very briefly what your project is? And we've got it up on the screen. Um, yeah, my project is going to be about the 9-11 terrorist attacks. And I'm planning on um, focusing on the characters, the terrorists and first responders and things like that. And also having, what have I got there? Um, maybe places, and events. Okay, so this is, yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? So I, I kind of played around with that because I couldn't resist, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if this is helpful or not, but I was playing, um, so I think I created a bunch of tiddlers named for terrorists. Um, mm -hmm. What did I do? I took, this is all from two sentences. <laughs> um, so it gives, to give you an idea of how much time you can spend on this if you want to. And, and this is about the, um, in some respects, this, the, the, the beautification is not about the quantity, but the quality. So you might wanna, um, so, so we, I think I took like two sentences from the existing text, no, that's not it, um, and pasted them in somewhere. Do you remember where I put them in? Um, I think if you click on event, you might find something. Oh, here we go, okay. So this is the existing text, right? This yeah, is the existing actually, text from the report. I was actually thinking of using that report more as for my own information and trying to find photos and video and audio from elsewhere online for the most part. That's fine, yeah. Um, I, the nice thing about using the existing text from the report is it gives you text. Yeah, it's already there. <laughs> Yeah, you can illustrate it, you can expand it, but it gives you a basis to build from. That's true. Okay, and that's really important. Um, and what I, this is the second one I built. So here's a sentence, and I started saying, well, what would, how can I tag this? Some of these tags, I think, are duplicates. So I'm gonna, let me clean it up, because I, um, I know they're not after. Um, we don't really need crit, because that's not helpful, but you begin to see how, intensive the tags can be, um, which is okay. You don't necessarily have to display them all if you're worried about that. We can, you know, you can move tags and get, you don't even have to display them at all if they're not helpful. Um, but so that nothing, you don't have to do anything. Any, everything is available for you to change, okay? Uh, you yeah. can put the title of the tiddler on the bottom. You could, whatever. Every, this is the title, this is the subtitle, these are the tags, these are all separate templates or separate components of the tiddler that we can move around. Um, so I began to tag them. Um, and then I began to think about, well, maybe we want to create a little timeline. Okay. So the events, so I began to think of, and I think this is exactly where Kira was headed. Um, um, this is where the link is to the original text. Okay. Um, is that these might very small sets of facts become events. So something happens and you can, you need a definition of that, but pretty much like a, call, a sentence or two or three out of the original report 
becomes an event. So that gets its own tiddler. Um, <clears throat> and you might want to, and to tag all these tiddlers is going to be difficult and complicated. So you might not want to do it in TiddlyWiki, or you might want to figure out an easier, an easy way to tag it. You might search the text automatically. You, there's some, there's a macro out there that you can find that's going to say, well, once, once Wali, Wali Al Shari is this, is defined as a tag, I'll go through your text and find it in the text and tag the tiddlers that have it. You know, so there's, there's, you want to automate these things um, as much as you can. Um, yeah. And then what I was doing was I went to the event and then you begin. Okay, so then you might click on this. Where's what did I do? I did Boston, right? I did a timeline of Boston events. Okay. Um, so here I'm using a list filter and this is the kind of thing you'd put into a template or into a macro. Um, but I'm using a list filter. I'm saying, well, find everything that's tagged with Boston and event sorted by time. Okay. I've got them in my filter. And then what I want to view for each filter or for each, for each tiddler that's tagged with this, right? That makes it through my filter. What I want to view is the field called time and then a colon. And then I want to open up a link. And this is sort of like the same way that you write links in HTML. So you open up a link with dollar sign link. And then the link itself, I want to view the title of the tiddler I'm working with. And then I close the link. Um, and, um, and I put a, looks like I put a, a, a line return there and I might need a break if there's more than two of them, but let's see so how that does. And this begins to then list 645 terrorists board American Airlines flight. Um, I have one of them that has two events because then I got, well, as soon as I get two events, I'm done. So that's okay. Um, what's the other one I did? Terrorist board, timeline of Boston events. Timeline of all events. Here it is. Ah, okay. So I hadn't quite figured out how to put a break in there. So this is the timeline of all events. Mm -hmm. um, so what's nice about this is you can copy this code and you only want to copy it once or twice and then figure out how to make it into a macro. And you go to any one of the terrorists or any one of the other um, tiddlers that you have that serve as tags. Um, Actually, once she's got it as a macro, then maybe yeah. apply it as a view template. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what, that's where the macro is going to start paying dividends for you. So each of these tiddlers, I'm going to cancel this because I got lost as to what I was doing. Um, each of the tiddlers become a, um, a header for all of the events that are related to it. Okay. So then, I mean, do you see how that, so you might want to think about taking the first two pages of the report and breaking it down to the sentence level if you're going to have 40 or 50 events that will probably be more than enough if yeah. you're looking, if you're looking to build something that covers more material then you want to you don't want to have such a fine grain mm -hmm. um and I, you know that just sort of depends on what you're interested in the the really fine grain is when you get to do the really interesting stuff <laughs> Um, and if you can automate that task and James, if you're still there, it's similar to what James is facing and what, um, um, Sean is facing. Sean is talking about doing a project with about a thousand photographs. Um, and you might have, I mean, you might get to the point where you have many, many events. I'm not, I don't know if you want to get to a thousand, but you know, if you get to even to hundreds, you need a strategy for managing all those events and, you know, sometimes Tiddly Wiki isn't a good data manager. A spreadsheet might be a better data manager for you. Mm -hmm. Once you master the importing and exporting um, of tid not exporting, but importing of tiddlers into Tiddly Wiki, you can import all your events at the same time when they, you know, when, and then when they don't work, you kind of go fix them in the spreadsheet and try it again. Um, yeah. Um, and that way you can, you're managing your data sort of on one side and then the interaction of the pieces. And that, if you get to that level, then you're not only writing, but imagining how these things are going to work out. And it, um, once they're imported and you, you, you're forced to mentally create a vision, I think, of how your spreadsheet data is going to get represented on a web page 
And if you can do that, then you have to, that's very powerful. Uh, that's a very powerful set of tools. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, so I think so. I don't know if this helps you. Um, yeah, I think it does. I, yeah. I got some stuff to to practice and play with. Yeah. Um, so and then finally for the I'm gonna spend like five minutes here. Um, um, and then I want to take a break because I need to get a drink and I'll come back with other questions if people have them too. Um, is this design right? The um, design right? The uh, the exercise um, um, for those doing the guided development and anybody else. Um, <clears throat> basically, what I'm trying to what I'm encouraging you to do is engage in three different practices. What I, I've ended up calling practices here. Um, the first is about what it's about creating interactives okay which is designing text that readers can engage okay um so these are this is a reader focused text so you're building something that your readers are going to use refactoring on the other hand is a writer's tool when you take your own text and break it down into smaller components potentially for others to use but mostly for yourself um and especially the kind of refactoring that we're talking about when you're breaking it um, a longer piece into multiple tiddlers, most of that's going to be for yourself, especially if you don't anticipate your readers ever reading it in any other than the order in which you, you present it to them. Um, and then the third practice is um, this notion of writing to think. Um, probably meant most of you have come across this in previous classes, but the idea that you, you, when you need to think about something, one of the ways you think about it is you write. Um, you, so, you know, it's, it's People do this in journaling. People do this um, many, many, you know, so I have to think about something so I write, where the project isn't to come up with a written text at the end, but it's to think about it. Maybe it's to, you know, whatever it is you have to work on, but you're going to think about it through writing. And that's very different than sitting there with thoughts in your head. It's the practice of the process of writing. And so you can, you can read about this notion of writing to think. Um, what I want you to do, though, is <clears throat> use Tiddly Wiki to write to think. Um, and while you're doing that, I want you to stop and say, oh, I get it, I see what I can do. Okay, I can do something here, and then write about those thinking. So here's, here's my first, and this is very, this just took me a long time to figure out how to get it there, and then I finally gave up and just wrote it. Um, I, I spent, that's why this exercise was so late, I was trying to figure out how I can actually have you do this and I, I couldn't figure it out so then here it is um so i just did it um and you can kind of read it and you'll see what i came up with and i'm hoping that you come up with something similar <laughs> you know that um it just i played around with these experiments about how i can write to think um and i'm going to add some others as i come up with that um and then the Third, the, um, um, and, and those are the three practices, okay? So the writing to think, there's not many experiments, it's just kind of see what you can come up with. Um, the experiments, which are, these are all sort of cross-tagged. Um, <clears throat> this implementing stretch text was fun. Um, and so, you know, you can do the same thing. You can go find another sentence and implement stretch text. Um, I, of course, found a sentence about hypertext and I implemented it. I did it three times and what's, oh, it's not even tagged there. I have to find the third one. Um, I missed a tag. What's, what's most interesting is to read the first attempt, the second attempt, and then the third attempt. Um, that's strange that it's not here. That's a little scary. Third, uh-oh. Oh. There's a third attempt to implement. Mm -hmm. Scary. Yeah, I saw you'd mentioned third attempt in the discussions, but I couldn't find it in the main design right wiki. Hmm. I'll have to work on it. Um, I, I wrote it somewhere and it was quite interesting. So I, I can't remember exactly what I did, but I'll, I, I must have not saved it properly. Um, I've been having problems with this week, you know, about getting things to save. So like everyone else, so it happens to all of us. Um, so this is the, um, and this looks like it's, yes, this looks like it's working. Um, I'll have to find the other one because it's, um, but basically this is the idea is like, can you come up with something that you want to make happen and then figure out how to make it happen? Um, and so the, 
Another one was to, to reverse engineering this Hanson writing. Um, like, can you make this happen? Um, and there should be a link. Play it out, capture the text. I did this, I thought I did this somewhere. Um, but you wanna go there and see if you can make a piece of this happen. Um, something like that, or find some other text that you can just play with. And so those are just experiments in <clears throat> playing, making text appear and disappear, if you will. Um, experiments in um, refactoring a longer text, um, and then in writing to think. Through all of these, the reason I asked you to do it this way is that you then, if you use this tiddler or, or this, this version of TiddlyWiki gives you access to this excision tool, um, which then opens up your opportunities to work with this excision tool, to work with the stamp tool, to sort of understand it. And then um, the ideas here are to see if you can generate some level, some understanding on your own. Um, and that's what I'm looking at. It, it really is a very open kind of exercise. So um, I wanted you to um, experiment with this latest version see if it works, see if the tools are interesting, and you'll, you'll see it as soon as you open up a new Tiddler, it's this bar right here. Um, and it, so it gives you, it's this very familiar edit bar, um, all sorts of little buttons that do things that you can play with, it does the H1, H2, H3 for you, this is the excision tool, um, allows you to insert a picture, um, which is kind of fun. Um, why you're gonna do that, I'm not sure. Um, you can, um, insert little blocks of text if you wanted them, um, undo, redo, um, size the edit bar if you wanted to do that, um, and apply the heading, um, open and close the preview pane, and you can change the way that the preview pane looks. You can have it display some things that I have no idea what the widget tree is or what the parse tree is, but you can do it. And I suspect that this would be important to understand, but not for me, perhaps not for anybody in our class. So um, anyway, so I wanted you to play, I want you to have the experience of playing with the, with, with the new set of tools and then trying to document your own set of learning. So it's really an opportunity to write um, in this tool. So, let me um, drop off there. I've got a, um, I will come back in 10 minutes if anyone is still interested in hanging out for a bit more. Um, I think there's some IBT students who are coming to do thesis work at some point after eight as well. Um, and we'll just go from there. Um, I have to take a break. I have to get my power cord and I have to get something to drink. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Steve. Yeah, sure. Catch you in a few minutes if you're still around.